Oh, you guys, we're talking about the pulmonology physiology, and this is the pneumothorax. So we are not doing the treatment of the neuro pneumothorax. It's not step two lecture. What we are doing is we are doing pneumothorax and the mechanism of the neuro pneumothorax. So let's look at it quickly. Uh, here is what happens in the normal chest. So let's say if I make two. lungs here. And we make trachea and the bronchi. We know that the lungs are covered. How do we know that? We just did that in our other lectures that lungs are covered with two type of pleura. One is the visceral pleura that is what I am drawing in this green. This visceral pleura is stuck. It is stuck to the to the lungs. It is almost part of the, the lungs external surface. And then is the parietal pleura that is not connected with the lungs. Instead, lungs are sort of floating in it freely and the parietal pleura parietal pleura is then connected with the chest wall so this is the ribs these are the ribs right and the ribs are connected with the parietal pleura the whole chest wall is connected with the parietal pleura and that chest wall keeps the parietal pleura moved, you know, pulled outwards. So the, the cavity between the visceral and parietal pleura is the pleural cavity. So today's story, today's problem, today's topic is about this cavity. So normally what happens is the pleural cavity, it has a small suction effect because of the lymphatics. I always make that as a small faucet like structure. So this is the parietal pleural cavity. Pleural cavity has normally a pressure of minus 5 centimeter of water, right. So that is a normal situation. Now lungs are pulled out because of this minus centimeter. So what happens is chest cavity pulls the parietal pleura out. Parietal pleura exerts pressure on the fluid in this here and tries to suck the fluid outwards. Fluid is then causing a suction effect on the visceral pleura. Visceral pleura is tightly bound to the lungs. So the lungs are pulled out. That is how the outward pull happens and that is why there is minus 70, minus 5 centimeter of water pressure. Now imagine this for a second before we talk about pneumothorax. Imagine this for a second. If this suction effect is taken away, if this outward pull is taken away, then the lungs have a tendency to collapse, right? We did that in our previous lectures. What contributes to that tendency to collapse? We know that there is the fluid air interface problem or surface tension generated by that and secondly there is the surface tension generated by elastin and collagen fibers that are trying to that are trying to recoil so if you somehow remove the forces out here that are pulling the lungs open then the forces that are moving that are pulling the lungs inwards recoil forces will win and the lungs would shrink and collapse. So this is the recoil forces. Recoil forces, we've talked about it. One third is the tissue, elastin and fibrin. Two third of the forces are the, the fluid present in alveoli, fluid in alveoli. Alveoli, we have- Like this video and smash that subscribe button as well and make sure that you hit the bell button and get the notifications for the new videos in the future.